will be by Professor Kershen, Gaetan Kershen from University of Liege. It's a paper co-authored by several, maybe younger authors, uh, uh, even though Gaetan is also young. And the title is Nonlinear Normal Modes, Modal Interactions and Isolated Resonance Curves. Okay, good morning everybody. So I would like to uh, mention that this um, um, presentation is the result of a collaboration with University of Wisconsin-Madison with uh, Professor Matalen. And uh, the, the work was done by Rob Kuter, who is now at Sandia. Uh, and he was visiting us during three months in Liège. So, of course, I mean, here it's like bringing coal to Newcastle. Uh, Nonlinearity is often observed in real structure. Uh, and this, for instance, this, this is a satellite that we had the chance to study um, where nonlinearity is uh, purposefully introduced. I'm not going to disclose the details, uh, but basically you have mechanical stops and elastomer plots to protect the satellite from the vibration of an inertia wheel. So we did some experimental uh, tests. We also did a model, and while playing with the model, we uh, found what is called uh, what we call an isola, an isolated resonance curve. So here you see a 3D plot showing the frequency responses of this uh, satellite. So this is the finite element model with the nonlinear device here. So you see frequency, forcing amplitude, and displacement are dimensionalized. And uh, at some uh, forcing amplitude, you see the creation on a fi uh, an, an isolated resonance curve that you can miss, for instance, uh, easily uh, during the computation or during the experiment. But the problem is that these isolated resonance curves, they may attach to the main branch. And so this presentation is about um, a means of revealing uh, relatively easily these isolated curve without doing a very important computation, so without computing domains of attraction, for instance. So how can we detect and manage uh, isolas? Well, you can do brute force computation. It's very, uh, uh, very powerful, but it takes a lot of time. Uh, you can use analytic methods, perturbation method, to reveal them. And these are the two approaches used in the literature. And in this presentation, I will show you how we can reveal uh, these isola using bifurcation tracking, but also directly from nonlinear normal modes. So this is the outline of the presentation. We, uh, we assume that we have a mathematical model of some form of the structure. Then we will compute the nonlinear normal modes of the, the structure. So you will have a picture of the unforced and undamped uh, dynamics, because these we consider here a Rosenberg nonlinear normal mode, so undamped nonlinear normal mode. Then we will uh, use what is called an energy balance mapping to transform, so we are going to transform the undamped and forced response into a forced damped response. And so this is uh, uh, as if the structure was excited with, for instance, harmonic forcing. And I will show you that by inspecting this plot, we can reveal uh, quite in a quite straightforward manner uh, the presence of isolated resonance curves, by just by inspection. So just uh, a few words uh, about nonlinear normal mode. So we, we used Rosenberg definition. So basically, a nonlinear normal mode is the periodic solution of the Hamiltonian system. Uh, but uh, we, um, we have modified a little bit Rosenberg definition because it's uh, restrictive. So we don't consider synchronous periodic motion because uh, you uh, ignore modal interaction when you do that. So we. Uh, consider nonlinear normal mode just as periodic motion of your Hamiltonian system. And so they may not be uh, synchronous when you have a modal interaction. Just to remind you that nonlinear normal modes can predict actually the locus of resonance peaks. So here uh, we compare uh, a damped force response. So the, the black solid line is the damped force response of, uh, of a system. Uh, for several forcing amplitude, and the uh, nonlinear normal mode, they form the backbone of these uh, damped force response. Also, nonlinear non normal mode are undamped and unforced in this case. So that was a reminder. 
So I'm not giving details on how we compute nonlinear normal modes. We uh, do it numerically using shooting and pseudo arc length continuation. It's very uh, straightforward in some sense. These are well established techniques. And so here you see the result for uh, our example. It's a beam with uh, a cantilever beam with a, a nonlinear spring at its free end, and we have added a, a small mass, and we have harmonic forcing here. Uh, so here, again, this is the undamped, unforced picture. So this is the first nonlinear normal mode of the beam. We start at a natural frequency of 22 hertz. We increase due to the hardening effect of the cubic spring, and we observe some strange loops in the frequency energy plot. So here, this is the frequency of the periodic motion, and so this is the energy uh, which is conserved in the Hamiltonian system. So these actually uh, tongues or loops correspond to modal interaction. So he here we draw other backbones in the frequency energy plot, but we draw them at one uh, third of their frequency, uh, because if you are uh, periodic with a motion with a, per um, a period t, you are also periodic with a period 3t. So this is why we can draw this line at uh, the third of its frequency. And this allows you to see that actually this loop is an interaction between nonlinear normal mode 1 and 2. It's a 3 to 1 interaction. This one is a 1 to 9, 9 to 1 interaction with 3, and this one is 1 to 7 with 3. So keep these modal interaction in mind because they will play a central role when looking at isolated resonance curves. So now we are going to take this unforced, undamped uh, result and transform it to a forced, damped result. And to do that, we, um, we use the energy balance uh, theory, which was uh, uh, developed for linear system in the 50s, and uh, that it was also uh, uh, extended to nonlinear system by uh, Simon Neal from Bristol. And the idea is fairly simple. Uh, the energy you input should be uh, equal to the energy at the output if you vibrate along uh, a mode. So here we write uh, the energy of the harmonic forcing at a specific point, k. So we have uh, amplitude of the forcing in the frequency. And this is the output energy uh, dissipated uh, by uh, the damping. Here you have the damping matrix and the velocity. And so here we can answer the question, what is the forcing amplitude required to excite a specific nonlinear normal mode? Um, there is a mistake here. Uh, A should not be in the integral. So here you see the forcing amplitude that you need to excite your nonlinear normal mode here represented by the velocity. So if we know the damping matrix, if we know the, the nonlinear normal mode, we know the harmonic forcing, we can directly estimate. The, the force we need to excite the mode. And so doing, uh, using this energy balance, we can transform this plot into that plot. So undamped and forced into damped force. And so here you see that if you want to excite the nonlinear normal mode at 30 hertz, you have to apply a uh, forcing amplitude equal to this value. Now we are going to uh, inspect this plot, this energy balance uh, plot very carefully to reveal isolated resonance curves. So let's go back to the plot and uh, we are going to increase gradually forcing amplitude. So if we increase forcing amplitude, we have one solution, one solution, one solution. But at a very specific point, we have many solution, many possible solution. And actually these are potential uh, additional resonances. And you see that at this point, you create new solution, and I will show you that you create actually isolas. And uh, keep this number in mind, so according to this prediction, we should have an isola created at 22.3 Newton and uh, at a frequency of 46.5 Hertz. And now we can uh, check these results using bifurcation tracking because one possible mechanism for isola to be created is through fold bifurcation. When you create an isola, you generate two folds and by tracking the folds, you can reveal the isola. So this here represents uh, what I've just said. 
So you have the classical frequency response curve with isolated branches that merge with the main branch here. And here you see the locus of fault bifurcation. And so this is the 2D projection of the, this locus. And you see that we have one fold, and up from this forcing amplitude, we create two new folds. And these two new folds are the fold bifurcation defining the isolated resonance curve. And bifurcation tracking tells you that the isola is created from 20.7 uh, Newton at 45.7 hertz. And this shows you that our prediction, of course, it, it's approximate. I will come back to that later. But it gives you a, a very good idea of uh, the location of the isola and uh, the forcing amplitude at which it's created. And so we can also do a direct numerical continuation to verify these findings. So here we see we have only one solution. Here we, we calculate the corresponding frequency uh, response. We have clearly one, only one resonance here. But if we go beyond the creation of the isola, we can compute this isolated branch at 26 Newton, which is greater than the prediction. And then we can continue. And then the isola will merge with the main branch, forming one very important resonance peak. OK, and so it's also interesting now to do the opposite. So we are go going to superpose the damped forced response on the undamped and forced plot. So here you see uh, the non-inner normal mode in the frequency energy plot. And we superpose here the frequency response curve. And very interesting, uh, interestingly, we see that here we have not yet reached the 3 to 1 modal interaction. So there is no isola. As soon as the, the, the main branch gets in the vicinity of this loop, we see that the isola is created. So this, I mean, this is not really a formal proof, but this is an observation that tells you that isola we can be created in the vicinity of modal interaction. And uh, these are further evidence. If you compare the time series uh, between the two curves, so the blue curve, again, it's the damped force curve. So the, these are this curve. And uh, the black curve is undamped on force. It's this. Point A is we compare the frequency response and the nonlinear normal mode. You see that they are uh, in pretty uh, good agreement. And so one way also to detect isola in practice very, very quickly is to do sign sweep. Now, if you s do a sign sweep, so you increase uh, rapidly the frequency of your harmonic forcing, uh, and you apply it to the beam, uh, you see here a linear regime, basically where the cubic spring of the beam is not activated. Then we have 23 Newton, 32 Newton, uh, classical jump phenomenon in amplitude, but from 32 to 36, you see we increase just a little bit the forcing, and we have a huge increase in terms of resonant frequency. It's because the isola is merging with the main branch, and you have this very sudden increase in frequency. It's also interesting to see that you can generate quasi periodic motion uh, because you have uh, hop bifurcation on the isola, and when you connect the isola, on the main branch, you generate quasi periodic motion. But what is particularly interesting is this sudden change in resonance frequency uh, that is due to the merging of the isola with the frequency uh, main branch, frequency branch. And this can be easily seen in, in the lab by just applying a sign sweep. So, conclusion uh, modal interaction between nonlinear normal mode can generate isola. And you can predict uh, the isola based on the nonlinear normal mode. So it's a very uh, quick way of uh, revealing a, a isola. And I would like to finish this presentation by, by showing you that the system can potentially present numerous isola, not, not only just one. So now we take the same beam, but with less damping, because the previous beam was quite highly damped, 1% and 5% damping on the first two modes. And now if you, uh, if you look at the fold bifurcation, you will see that we can generate actually three isola. And some of, of, the, of them will merge together before merging with the main peak. So let's, let's increase gradually harmonic forcing. 
1.3 newton. We have already two isolas, so one small here and one large there. They can be predicted here, one and two, and we will also create a third one here. But before we create the third one, we c we isola one and two will merge together to create what we call a super isola, because it, it res results from the merging of two isola. So now we have one very large isola and the main branch. We increase again the forcing. The super isola merges with the main branch, and we have created another isola, isola three that you see here. And eventually, isola three will merge with the main branch, giving you a very complex peak where you retrieve the first merging here and the second merging there. And so to conclude the last slide, um, I would like to, sh to explain you also that this is not an exact methodology. Uh, in principle, um, the energy balance requires multi-point, multi-harmonic forcing. So here we stick to a one harmonic forcing with one frequency. And the uh, accuracy uh, of the energy balance is extremely good at low damping and is less good at moderate damping. What we cannot predict with this plot is the merging. We can predict when the isola is created because you have this, uh, uh, the, the, this bifurcation somehow, but we cannot predict the merging. And I would also like to stress that there exist other mechanisms for generating isola that are not uh, taken into account by this methodology. So that's all for me. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Gaetan. Uh, here, um, I think, let me, to compute the modes, I think nine, nine, nine terms. Okay, because you, could, you replace the problem, which is the continuous, into a set of algebraic equations. Yes. They are nonlinear. Because they are nonlinear, you have many solutions for the nonlinear problem. Uh, how do you know that this, whatever you are getting, the isla, are the result of the approximation by having these highly nonlinear algebraic equations and creating fictitious solutions. Because oh. we found some of those when they were talking about, I don't know whether you followed the paper, resolving the controversy by Burton, and the, which, which I wrote the paper, where you have these isolates and so on, but they were essentially artifacts because of the nonlinear Okay, uh, so here uh, they are not artifact because we verified uh, our uh, result with shooting uh, and with mat count as well. So they are. Yes, shooting on the origin. On the, origin. On, on, on the partial differential equation? No, no, we don't uh, shoot on the partial, we shoot on the fine entanglement model, wi yeah, which is. How, the, how accurate, since this oh, model you have, because you have number, you replace with the finite element essentially nonlinear equations or the yeah, yeah. differential. But there is creating, because of that, you are creating this nonlinearity, which might be the artifact of the nonlinear equation. Did you do it on the original? No, no, we do it on the fine element model, we the original but with many, many degrees of freedom. So I think the, the error due to discretization is. But I would be interested in, in the paper you mentioned. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm afraid that we have to. to